Tim. Hey Nick, hello Sonic State, welcome to um, pre -Messa. This is our setup day. Uh, the plastic is still on the floor. Um, we're still, we're nearly ready, but not quite, but you've, uh, you've caught us cold, so we'll see how we go. Um, so I'm Tim Chan, I'm the product manager with Nectar. We are um, showing at Mesa our Panorama series. Um, I guess the important thing to say about the Panorama series, given that you've got lots of uh, keyboards coming out calling, you know, they've been branded by the media smart controllers, I guess. Um, but the Panorama was, was there a long time beforehand and actually is a lot smarter than the smart controllers, isn't it? And um, that's what I'm about to show you. The key is for the Panorama series is they aren't MIDI controllers. I think we're underselling them by calling them MIDI controllers, so we're going to look at rebranding them really as door controllers because that's essentially what they are. You have three modes of door control, like mixer, instrument, uh, transport. And our mixer support isn't just basic levels and sends and um, transport. You see, that's what a lot of people would, would, would call door integration. They, they, they stick MCU support in there. They tell you to go and open another company's pro, you know, protocol within your door. Um, whereas what next we're doing, we're writing a protocol specifically for your door. Each door we treat individually and we write custom protocols. And that's why we get, you, get the, you only get the experience that you will with a Nectar controller. You won't get it with anyone else. Um, so, so for example, here, here is a mixer mode. We're controlling Reaper right now. We haven't shown uh, much Reaper, Reaper video, so it's worth having a quick look at this. Um, and the way it works is you have the standard mixer set up volumes, selected track volume, selected track is highlighted highlighted here and you've got the motorized fader, see as I move this fader the motorized fader moves because that's always your selected track volume. Now this is high resolution, it's not 7 bit MIDI, this is this is 1024 steps of control inside that fader. Uh, we're not limited, because we are writing custom protocols, we're not limited to 7 bits MIDI, we can um, have the, any resolution we choose to. And that's the one of the things, we're not limited, that's, that's why we're able to do what we do. Um, okay, so you can see here you've got your, your mixer control, just the usual stuff of mutes and solos and sends and pans. Whereas down here you've got um, EQ. Well, in this case we haven't got an EQ on this track, but you can see um, the panorama is intelligent enough to see that there's no EQ on there and you can create one, just like that. Um, and it pops up on the track that you're controlling and then you've got straight away control of your selected track. It's always the selected track, the track you're playing with your keys, that's the important one for a keyboard player. Which track am I controlling? That's what I want to tweak. So I don't have to go through the thought process of which is the EQ channel that I need to control now. There's no mouse involved. This is always going to be your selected tracks for um, EQ. So here I am controlling punch and I can start tweaking up the gain and the, of the low end straight away. Um, the way that the Nectar works is the top level is always accessed by pressing the mode button. So if I press the mixer button, I go back to the top level and you can see I've got inserts, sends and channel. We'll just take a quick look at what they are. In inserts, you've got a list of available inserts. The, uh, the, the data encoder selects the insert you want to control. You can view it inside, uh, inside the door um, and you can edit it. And there you have all of the controls in the, in the, in the EQ we were, we were just controlling. Notice how all the, the, the controls are laid out in a nice way. It's not arbitrary names for pages, page one, page two. There's 12 controls on this page, but you know what? It's very clear as to how you get between frequency and cue. Um, you can also bypass straight away. And then effect sends. Um, you can see we've got, um, in here, we've got two sends available to us on this, on this particular track in, in Reaper. Again, I can select the send I want to do uh, using a data encoder. Um, this, this red highlight shows you which one's selected and from there you can set pre and post fader, um, turn the send on and off. Um, and then your send levels for that track are available to tweak on the encoders down here. And then, if, and then you've got um, a, a, channel, a channel one, so as I'm playing you can see I've got a VU, VU coming up and I've got all my channel controls for that specific channel. Oh, that's nice, I've not seen the VU before. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite, responsive. Quite, quite handy. Um, Read and write controls, and um, you can bypass all your EQ control as well. That's all. That's always there. And you can also set the fader, uh, this master fader, to stay on the master channel rather than your selected track. Now it's important to say that this is the selected track because I'm now going to go over to instrument mode, and this is where our plugin control comes in. I'm going to talk a little bit more about our maps later, our plugin map system, because it's really quite advanced, and we've actually just announced the um, new a new plugin map system and an upgrade 
that's coming with our Cubase uh, 1.5 support. Um, the plugin map system we're introducing is now going to benefit from support for dynamic uh, plugin mapping, um, which is quite key to, to native instruments complete in particular, which we're about to look at um, after I've just taken you through the rest of the Reaper stuff. But basically in instrument mode you get, um, you get all of the controls that are available, not just eight, um, although there's eight in these controls, down here you can see you've got the, the bass drum, you've got the different levels, the drums uh, of punch. Um, so all of the parameters are modulized, if you like. So if I go to, um, let's go to a track, Predator. Predator's got lots and lots of parameters. In here, I have all my parameters available. So if I want to tweak the filter of what I'm doing on there, I can just scroll down to filters, hit enter, and then I can... So, you know, it's very quick and easy to find your way um, around the plugin that you're controlling. It's not perhaps a dedicated controller for that plugin, but because of the way that we map everything out in an individual way, you know, over 600 plugins maps now, um, because we do that in that way, it's probably, it's not dedicated, but it is the next best thing you can get to a dedicated and, controller And you do that, that all sort of by hand? I mean, that's yep, the thing Yeah, right one it, right? by one. Um, yeah, some of them are bigger than others and take a little bit longer, but essentially that's the only way to get the kind of user experience I think people people want. Sometimes when people talk about can it control plugins, they don't really know exactly what, what they, sometimes maybe they don't quite know what they expect from that. Well, and, the smart rapper, then you yeah, that. And, the, and the smart controllers, you know, don't actually control the plugin, they control all the most, you know, the systems that are coming out at the moment, they can, they have like a host plugin that then hosts another plugin, and then you, you're controlling the host plugin, not the plugin itself. Um, what, what you saw there was Predator was on a track, we're controlling it directly through the door. There's no wrappers, there's no um, host plugin. It's transparent and it's the way it should be. We're controlling the door and through the door we get our plugin support. Then we map out all of the plugins for you and you just get a nice, unique, transparent experience. Um, and again, you know, the plugin mapping as we've seen is only one mode of the three important door modes because the final mode transport um, as basic as it seems transport, everything has six transport controls, we know about that. Anyone who, who emulates the MCU protocol, which is the most common way of getting door integration, which is a bit That's of a cheat really. Control, isn't it? Yeah. Mackie control, not it? Yeah, the Mackie MCU, yeah. Sorry for being a little bit uh, overly geeky there. Um, but yeah, Mackie MCU, most of the door control that people shout about is basically just simple mixer, faders and pan, mutes and solos if you're lucky. Uh, and then six controls for transport, whereas what we've got is extended transport, not just on the Panorama series, but also if you come over to the, um, to the LX series, you've got extended transport. So we've got the six controls, but you hold down shift, you've got, you can set your loop points, undo, click, turn your record mode on. So, you, you know, even on our, our more budget range, you know, um, so 200 pounds, 200 GB pounds for an H8 Note semi weighted controller with Nectar door integration, we've still got controls that are vital to stop you having to use the mouse all the time and the amount of time that saves and the amount of boost that gives you to workflow, workflow being another um, abused uh, word in, in MIDI controller manufacturer uh, marketing. Um, workflow is key to what we do, everything we do is about workflow for the particular product that we're, we're making because we're making keyboards at the moment, that's what we're focused on, the workflow of a keyboard player. Okay, so you've got you can set your loop points. You can you can you can move the set the loop on and off. Um, obviously, you can set your left and your right loop. Um, you can set it all up there from the controller, so you don't have to keep reaching over for the QWERTY and the mouse. But should you want to reach over for the QWERTY and the mouse, um, you can anything you can do. Well, you can still do. What, what should I say? I should say basically, if you press the internal button, the fourth mode, if you like, that's the MIDI controller mode. So we've got three door controllers and a MIDI controller, all in one. Um, an internal mode, everything can be freely mapped, just like any MIDI control. But you've also got the ability to map um, QWERTY keystrokes to any button or any pad, as well. On top of that, that you can access alongside the door control. Um, so you really, really have, you know, we're going to town on what we know is, is vital, what we can control through the doors um, APIs that are available to us. And um, on top of that, you've got the ability to customise it as well yourself. So what I'll do now is I'll switch over to Cubase by pressing one button, bang. <laughs> and now we're going to control, complete control for you. Um, I will show you Cubase, we can't quite do this from the panorama just now. But you can see here we've got complete control on, 
on this track. Oh, other little things I didn't mention is the fact that you can op view, open and close the particular window. If I'm in mixer mode, then I can view the, the mixer. Uh, if I'm in instrument mode, I can view the instrument on the selected track that I'm doing. Now, Native Instruments Complete Control, as we know, the Complete Control software was developed um, and is available for anyone who has Complete 10. Um, it's a nice demo for us because it really highlights our dynamic mapping and the new feature that comes with the reason Cubase, sorry, the Cubase 1.5 integration, which is due to be announced in the next few days um, and this is now being demoed at Music Messer. So here we have complete control running. Um, and you have every single control is used across the, the, the patch inside complete control. Um, and you also have the same page navigation system we saw with Reaper. So here we've got complete control with FM8 in there. I can uh, control um, the easy controls, for example, of of FM8 very, very quickly. So I can control the FM8 quite easily there. Um, every, every single parameter again is mapped out in a modular way. So you want to control a filter, you go to the filter, you want to control the morph, you go to the morph. It's quick and easy to find your way around. But also there's the up and scale controls of complete here. So these are the features that um, um, a unique to complete control. You have scale, you have chords, and you have um, arpeggiation. And all of that is available on the panorama. You can see from going through complete control, through the door, going into complete control, we're just taking the parameters it presents to the door, and that's what we're controlling. So you've got here, and we've mapped it out for you. There's your, your arp controls, and here's your scale controls. Um, you can turn your scale on and off, you can change the chords. <laughs> Turn this chord off again. You've got your scale root on. Um, yeah, so you've got full control of, of, of complete control if you like. Um, what I'm going to do though is the, the important point I made earlier is that for a plugin, um, we don't need a plugin host. Complete control is a plugin host for, um, you know, and that's Native Instruments' way for their smart controller to, to control your complete software and it's a great controller customized for that but of course we've got the advantages you saw with Panorama that we can control any VST whether it's mapped out or not if it's mapped out you get that, the perfect modular experience that we showed you but if I've got a um, let's go to a track with with um, Massive you can see here we've got Massive on a track by itself so again if I press the view button it's not complete this is just Massive as it is um, I can change the patches that I've set up here we're controlling the the the, um, the Cubase patches if you like, so you just store any patch you want as a Cubase patch, and then um, your due to our new dynamic support, um, this used to be in, in our version one of Cubase support if you like, massive macro controls would be just macro one to eight. Now because we've got the dynamic support, the macros that Massive tells us per patch are on there, are written onto the display. So if I change the patch, you can see, yeah, they're actually named, so you've got different different parameters jumping up and down for those macros. You've also got this um, this way of working, so get to, get to the filters page, you control the filter, bang, you can control. You can control your uh, massive filter straight away. Um, filter one, filter two. So, you know, it's just, it's just quick and easy and intuitive. Um, and this is the way that um, we believe it should be. Over, again, you've not just got the eight controls here, you can see you've got controls of, um, for Massive as well. So all of the entire control surfaces worked out. If I go to um, envelopes, for example, here's my envelope controls. But the here I've still got my, my, my other controls. So, so, you know, the entire control surface, not just eight parameters. Um, you know, and there's a reason that a lot of controllers use eight parameters, but essentially, you know, you, you like to have your envelopes over here. You like to have your, your pages over here. And that's kind of how we do things over, over at Nectar. Okay, so I guess that's a quick run over of, um, of our plugin map system. What I should show you is what happens when you have a dynamic um, when you have a dynamic plugin such as Contact. This is a prime example of a dynamic. Well, I keep saying dynamic mapping. What I mean by dynamic mapping is per patch you can have different pre uh, different controls, um, different parameters if you like in each patch. And what you do with the panorama is when you've mapped a parameter. So if we go, if we just open up Contact here, you can see see what I'm talking about, there it is. Um, when, you've, when you've mapped a parameter like so, um, Panorama has, has control over it straight away. Um, you can also learn controllers directly from 
from the device, like so. And when you learn a controller, it's literally move the control, um, move the control on, on Panorama. And then when you're done, you literally just say, OK, well, I'm going to save that, like so. And when you save it, that means that that patch now is going to have those controls every time that you call that patch up. You don't have to recall, you don't have to recall the map. You just, it will just do it for you automatically. Oh, that's clever. So, so, the pat, to do it. so every time you set up a patch and you go, I want to yeah. wail yeah. on those knobs, it'll just be there for you each time. Yeah, bang. Whatever you've set up for your patch in a dynamic plugin such as uh, such as this, you can see I've just changed the patch now. It's gone to my, my new mapping for contact. I've got a whole new contact instrument, completely different parameters, all assigned, and there we've got, and, um, I've got them all mapped out there. If I go back to the patch that we just done, you can see the one I just saved is going to is going to come back. It takes a while to load the patches in, in contact, of course, but you know. Anyway, you get the idea. That's um, that's dynamic plugin mapping. We now support support that with 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 Panorama. Dynamic plugin mapping will be available in our 1.5 integration for Cubase. It's coming up. It's going to be rolled into support for all of our other doors um, in the very near future as well. So. Um, yeah, the um, panorama door controllers, not MIDI controllers, door controllers. <laughs> Thanks very much.